This episode of Techno Buffalo is brought to you by the new LG OLED TV. It's not a new TV, it's a new category of television. What's up everyone? John Rittinger from Techno Buffalo here. So this is a bit different type of video than what we've usually done in the past. I'm a big car guy. And also, I've got a guilty pleasure of loving a good scandal. Uh, and there is definitely a juicy one going on right now with Volkswagen. Uh, so I thought I'd explain what's happening with Volkswagen. You might have heard about it in the news and sort of explain it step by step, what they did and what's going to happen and what kind of cars are affected. So here's a general overview uh, of what's been going on. Volkswagen cheated on EPA emissions tests by creating software that deliberately altered the clean diesel emissions uh, of their cars during testing. It's kind of crazy how they did it. It was like a mad scientist, genius way of uh, detecting when a car is being uh, tested by the EPA. It was able to test steering wheel position, speed, how long the engine was on, even atmospheric pressure, and all those things make it impossible for it to have been an accident. That the software is put in the car as an accident, it was innocent. Uh, it was very deliberate, it was deliberately put in the car uh, to skirt these EPA tests and to give false results. Let me explain everything that's happened, including just recently the CEO of Volkswagen stepping down, Martin Winkelhorn, um, just a few days ago. So the first question that I had was, how the hell did all this happen? And the funny thing is it happened totally by accident. So a random third party, not government affiliated, actually it was a university, um, was testing diesel emissions, was testing fuel emissions. Um, they were being performed by the International Council on Clean Transport, the ICCT. Uh, they were the first ones that discovered this emissions issue. Uh, the tests were really just setting out to prove a hypothesis that Volkswagen's new generation of TDI diesel engines were cleaner than standard gasoline engines, but unwittingly exposed uh, everything shady that Volkswagen was doing. So they were trying to show how good these cars were and sort of show that Volkswagen promoting their clean diesel as clean was really clean, and they stumbled on something uh, that Volkswagen is, is gonna haunt them for a very long time. So the ICCT first tested several diesel vehicles on a dynameter, or a rolling road, you might have seen those things, um, and then in the real world. So on the rolling road, things looked pretty normal. However, in the real world, things just did not add up at all. So they did a little bit of a road trip. They hopped in the car and they drove from San Diego to Seattle. They enlisted the help of West Virginia University. Uh, the ICCT tested the emissions of a Jetta TDI, a Passat TDI, BMW X5 xDrive 35D, and on the road trip, the Jetta produced 15 to 35 times the US legal limit, usually referred to as tier two bin five uh, of NOx, which stands for nitrogen oxide. The Passat produced five to 20 times the legal limit. And that's a lot of emissions coming out of these supposedly clean cars. While BMW's emissions were at or below the regulated rate. So BMW, you're good, exhale, no one's mad at you this time. Uh, at the same time, the California Air Resource Board, or CARB, tested the vehicles in the laboratories and the vehicles passed with flying colors uh, and gave very different results than they got for the ICCT. So in May of this year, the EPA got wind of this and they started investigating and that got us to where we are right now with these results finally coming public. So what cars are affected? A lot of them. Uh, two liter TDI diesel vehicles that are fitted with the Defeat devices spanned from 2009 to 2015 from both Audi and Volkswagen. The VW models include the Jetta TDI, Passat TDI, Golf TDI, Jetta Sportwagon TDI, and Beetle TDI. The Audi models are the 2009-2013 A3 TDI, as well as the new 2015 A3 TDI. That was a lot of TDIs. So right now, Volkswagen has not issued a plan to fix the cars, but I assume we'll have one very soon. Roughly in the US, 482,000 cars are affected, and here's where things get even more staggering. 11 million cars worldwide uh, could be affected. So what's Volkswagen gonna do? First, they can change engine software, which will limit engine output uh, and fuel economy drastically. Or they could install your urea treatment system, which not only requires huge amount of vehicle modification, cutting into trunk space, uh, cargo space, but it also costs VW thousands of dollars per car. The things are really, really bad here. Uh, if you follow the car world at all, you know Volkswagen for years have been touting clean diesel um, don't worry about driving a traditionally dirty diesel engine. We've cleaned it up. You'll get great fuel economy, get instant torque, and not pollute the environment. And those are all wrong. So imagine for a second that you went and just bought a new clean diesel car, and you were banking on selling that car maybe five or six years based on a high residual value. Now your car is going to take a huge residual hit, um, and not going to be worth what you thought it was going to be worth. And beyond that, when Volkswagen fixes it, you're not going to get the fuel economy you thought you were getting, and beyond that, now you're polluting the environment up to 40 times what you should be. Uh, people are very upset. Volkswagen is going to face so many class action lawsuits 
And beyond the billions and billions and billions you're gonna have to pay to settle that, they're probably looking at about half a trillion dollar of fines anyway. Real fast, let me exhale from all these diesel fumes that I've been breathing in uh, to thank our friends at LG and tell you about the new LG OLED TVs. So legitimately, these things look ridiculous. If you remember the first time that you saw a high def TV versus regular def TV and it was a staggering experience, that's the difference of seeing a regular LED TV or plasma TV versus the brand new LG OLED sets. They look absolutely incredible. Just a little O in front of the LED that stands for organic makes all the difference in the world. The TVs look real. It looks like a football game you're watching, you're actually at the game. It's staggering. You'll see that it's not just the new TV, it's, it's almost like a whole new category of television. They just look awesome. If you haven't seen it for your own eyes, that's the best way to check a TV. Go to a store, see what the LG OLED TVs look like in person, and I promise you'll be hooked. Uh, this could be the end of Volkswagen and Audi as we know it, at least the end of Volkswagen and Audi in the US. This is a horrible thing that they've done. Uh, it's not new in the car industry, it's been happening for, for years. Ford, decades ago, didn't replace a 50 cent part in the Pinto for the firewall. They knew that if you got rear-ended, the car would blow up because they deemed that it was more cost effective to settle the lawsuits and to fix the car. So things like this have been happening for a long time. GM had an issue, Hyundai's had an issue uh, with fuel economy numbers, but this is the largest, most widespread, egregious, blatant deception that we have ever seen from auto manufacturer. So hopefully I helped explain to you what's been going on. And if you drive on these cars, uh, I'm sorry. It's hard what Volkswagen's done. Um, I'm not sure how they're gonna come out of this, if they ever come out of it the same way uh, that they went in. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on it and kind of what you think about it. Uh, departure from the phone and mobile videos I usually do. I've been following the story really closely and I wanted to sort of just share uh, my thoughts and opinions on it uh, with you. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Until next time, I'm John Rench from Techno Buffalo. See you guys next video. Bye-bye.